you grow up autistic and you have pretty privilege, you get rejected a lot. But then we went through puberty and suddenly we started getting all this attention from guys. So for years and years and years, guys were all, like my entire friendship group, all those guys who were like my closest friends, my best friends, my like everything, all the way through my late teens, my early 20s, where are they now? If you've ever grown up with pretty privilege, you are going to be violently humbled by life at some point. Turns out by the time you're about my age, you, you realize that all the prizes you won with pretty privilege uh, were not prizes really at all. Like how many of them do you have left <laughs> at this point when it comes to the people that you that you won over with your pretty privilege, the people who were there for you for your looks, how many of them are really in your life anymore? Not many. Um, not many. So hello you wonderful citizen of the internet and welcome to a video about autism and pretty privilege and how if you have grown up with both of these things, particularly if you were assigned female at birth, it can leave you with some really big hang-ups and some really screwy things can go on in your life and your relationships because people... I don't know, people see you in a kind of way and then you start to see yourself in a kind of way and it's years before you realize how much that has screwed you up. Like I've seen a lot of videos over on TikTok about pretty privilege, autism and the manic pixie dream girl trope that people see you and you're like cute and you're quirky and you're funny and you're autistic and they expect you to be this cute, quirky, manic pixie dream girl and then when it turns out that actually you have genuine issues that come along with this and you're not always fun and upbeat they can't handle that shit that obviously is a big thing but it's not really what i want to talk about because i do see it discussed so much i don't feel i need to add to it um what i saw a video about the other day that made me think oh my god i have a lot of stuff to say about this was the fact that if you grow up autistic and you have pretty privilege um your entire self-worth and your entire self-esteem tends to go on to your looks because of the fact that your personality and like who you are as a person you get rejected a lot because you're autistic most of us if we were assigned female at birth and you're round about my age you probably weren't diagnosed with autism until you were an adult because of the underdiagnosing of females um so we didn't know why. We were never really part of the Cool Kids Club and no one wanted to be friends with us. But then we went through puberty and we got a bit older and suddenly we started getting all this attention from guys. And it was so much easier with guys. Guys wanted to be your friend and they laughed at your jokes and they thought you were funny and they didn't talk over you when you were talking and they didn't laugh behind your back and they weren't mean to you the way all the girls were when you were growing up. So for me, I just felt like I get on so much better with guys. Whereas with women, it's so complicated and it's so much more work and they can be so mean um, because they're they're not trying to fuck you. This is the thing you don't realize. It's because all the guys, you have pretty privilege and you're this, this you know, manic pixie dream girl and all the guys want to get in your pants. So of course they're fucking nice to you and of course they're kind of hypnotized when you speak and all of these things. Of course they're lovely to you, but they want this transactory thing. And in the back of my mind, I knew this because I had this huge hang up whereby I always felt no one, no one, is ever going to tolerate you unless you're sleeping with them. And this hang up, oh my God, this hang up has taken some of the best things from me in my life. Because the sad thing is that there, there is some kind of truth to this transactory relationship nature when it comes to friendships with the opposite sex. Like not always, I do believe that people of the opposite sex can be best friends and it can be fine and it can be great. But me, when I was growing up, all of, all of my friends, they were either my boyfriends, my ex-boyfriends, people who wanted to be my boyfriends, and then the friends of these people. Like, I, I had no friends that I had attained through my personality alone, and I barely, barely had anything to do with anybody female. I remember there was one girl who did invite me to a sleepover once. When I was like 20, she was about two years younger, 
And she was like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll do girly things. It'll be great. And I wanted to. I wanted to so badly because I'd never had that in my life. But I, I, at the same time, was terrified because I, I didn't, you know, like autistics, we're very much about we need to learn kind of by rote how to be social around people therefore if there's a social situation that we've never experienced the rules for before we're ter we don't want to go into it so i just kept saying no to her and i wish i hadn't because she was a lovely girl and i would have loved to have had those like girly experiences i never had them because I, d I didn't know how to be girly and all my experiences with girls was that they're very rude they're very dismissive they talk over you they don't like you they backbite they play games that i don't understand because all of these girls were neurotypical they knew that there was something weird about me and i couldn't keep up with their level of social intelligence like girls neurotypical girls are incredibly socially intelligent like i i am fascinated by reality tv shows about women things like selling sunset oh my god like the games that these neurotypical women play with each other and like the, the ways that they will they will have this conversation with like the new girl that sounds perfectly nice and perfectly fine and they're just getting her opinion on some things but then they will go to like someone they're more established with and they will say oh, she was bitching about you i brought up the fact that blah 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 blah, and she said blah 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 blah, and they will blow it out of all proportion and they will turn her into the evil witch and there will be like there is this whole social drama going on on a level of manipulation and craziness that i, I can't comprehend and obviously not to say that all neurotypical women are like that like not in a million years i think i think you know the whole reason they make reality tv shows about these women is because they're kind of awful people and obviously a lot of it is scripted too so it's like that but i have been in situations with neurotypical girls in high school where this kind of thing went on where they would they would do these things and they would you know, they would say things that would make you say something a bit nasty about someone. And then they would, you know, they would stir up this. So I was terrified of female friendships because it was, they were playing football on like a pitch so far above my level and I couldn't do it. And I was like, guys, don't do that. Guys are straightforward. You know, if they don't like you, they say they don't like you. Um, and it's just it's just easy and it's straightforward so for years and years and years guys were all like my entire friendship group was basically guys and my exes and guys who wanted to date me and blah 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 um and these guys you assume for years you assume and they've told you this they have told you that you are you are you are a friend you're not just a girl, you're a friend, you're in the bros before hoes category. And even when it comes to your boyfriends, if you have a boyfriend, these guy friends of yours will expect you to put them first before your boyfriend. Because it's like, look, loyalty. Loyalty, you know, bros before hoes. He's got to learn this is just how you roll. We're friends. You know, we put each other first when the shoe is on the other foot when he finally has the full package in a girl he has you know he's getting the sex and he's getting the friendship he's getting the emotional support and he's getting everything that he got from you but you know she's giving him all of it with the sex and the future and all of this um she isn't gonna like you being around because one of the other things about this if you are autistic and you have pretty privilege you've got pretty privilege so you're kind of a threat um and you're autistic and one of the other shit things about being autistic is that your social skills can be taken for flirtation a lot because of the fact that we stim we fiddle you know we tend to fiddle with things a lot like i have a tendency to kind of rub my chest my neck when i'm talking or when i'm reading um things like this i've noticed i've only noticed i do this because i go to the bathroom and i realize i have like a red patch on my neck where i've been doing this but we you know we fiddle with our jewelry we fiddle with our hair we 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 don't sometimes know that we're too close when we're speaking to someone um 
we don't know social rules. We get them wrong. And that can be taken as flirtation. So to this new girl who's got a new boyfriend, right, there's this girl who is maybe even his ex. She's cute. She's flirtatious with him. Oh, hell no. She doesn't want him. She doesn't want you around. You know, she, she's going to try and get you out of the way. And so many of these guys will just bend over backwards and they will kick you to the curb. And all of these years of you putting them first, all these years of you nearly you losing your boyfriends because you put him first and you believed him when he said, oh, bros before hoes, yeah, you're one of us. You won't be invited to the stag night, honey. You won't be. Uh, you, will <laughs> you won't be his friend. Once he finds someone real, you are emergency pussy. All those guys who were like my closest friends, my best friends, my like everything all the way through my late teens, my early 20s. Where are they now? I mean, some of them are still good friends, but they have moved away. They've moved to London. They've moved to New Zealand. They're not like, you know, really in town which is probably why I've managed to stay friends with them, despite them having relationships and all of that. But the ones who are still in town, who have relationships, gone. Um, so there was this period in my early 30s where I had no friends, like none. I mean, I had a lot of clubbing acquaintances, male and female, I had clubbing acquaintances. I could go to a club in the city anywhere and there'll be lots of people to say hi to and have a bit of a laugh with and all of that. But as far as I want someone to hang out with on a Friday night or something really shit has just happened to me and I need someone to talk to, no one. I had no one. And now that I am lucky enough to have back in my life some friends who are close and who are wonderful and who I can lean on, well, guess what? All of them assigned female at birth. Some of them are non-binary, some of them are women, but all of them assigned female at birth or they're like the husbands of female friends. Um, so despite the fact that I was brought up with all brothers and that I've always found it easier to talk to guys, all the guys, as soon as they found a woman who was the full package they just disappeared on me. There was no loyalty. Like, are they deliberately being this manipulative? Do they know? Yeah, yeah, I would sell you out for a woman. Yeah, I would. I'll, I'll tell you everything, but yeah, I would sell you out for a woman. Or do they just genuinely get this manipulated by their next girlfriend? He knows that it's not your fault that this woman thinks you're a threat, but he, he is still the one to drop you on your ass and leave you with no friends whatsoever. Um, it's, it's shitty. It's really, really, really shitty. So I would say, yes, if you are young, autistic, pretty, female, um, try to keep some women around, even if you find it hard to communicate with them. Try and make sure they're neurodiverse women, I would say. Like neurotypical women, to this day, I, I don't have luck there. <laughs> <laughs> don't have luck there as far as friendships go um i do still find that trying to talk to neurotypical women they seem to hate me they they, they always talk over me uh they can be very rude they can be very dismissive they leave you out of everything they never invite you to anything um even though they seem they can be kind of friendly but then they leave you out of everything and you, you just you always end up feeling like that kind of like high school kid who's like left out and laughed out laughed at kind of behind closed doors and yeah so I neurotypical women I, I've never really had great experiences with unless there's like a familial tie like if they're like um like my sister-in-law or something and they, they kind of have to tolerate me on some level they you know some of them can be quite open-hearted and quite nice um albeit in a way whereby you, you kind of know that you're like a bit of a pity friend, you know? It, they're in your family. Your family talk about everything. They know you've got issues. So you kind of have this pity friend in <laughs> neurotypical women in your family, but um, it's the uh, the neurodiverse women that you, wa you want to keep those close because those are going to be the ones who are going to be there for you later in life. They're going to be the ones who matter. Second element of this pretty privileged autism shit show is fear of aging. Um, because of the fact that 
all of your self-worth and all of your self-esteem has gone onto your looks because this is how you have been treated. The only way I can ever make friends is to go to a club dressed in nothing and the guys fall at my feet, they become my friends, I befriend their friends and suddenly I have friends, but it all comes from how I look. So of course you have this crippling fear of aging, right? Um, because you know all you have is your looks and they're going to be taken away from you. Like if I had have been richer when I was younger um, and if, if like all the plastic surgery stuff that you can have done so easily and so well, relatively cheaply now, if that was more of a thing when I was younger, my face, pfft, I would be unrecognisable because I was so afraid of ageing. You seem like a very vain person, I think, to people because you're so afraid. And you seem very ageist too. You do seem ageist at that age and you are ageist at that age. But people don't realise that it's because you've got this, this massive tangly headfuck of issues attached to the way you look. But we know how older women are perceived in this society that you become invisible or worse you are outright mocked you you know we've we've all seen the women who are older and who go to clubs and they dress very young for their age and you get people who are so foul about those women um and you're like i i don't want that i don't want to go from being like worshipped to mocked you know of course you're afraid of aging of course you're ageist um, and I think the, the only cure for this really is to start valuing something else about yourself. So for me, um, it was writing and, and oddly enough, writing came about through this fear of aging I had because the first things I wrote about were vampires and my, my the reason I was so fixated on vampires was the eternal youth thing. So it was kind of this, this ageist thing I had got me thinking about vampires and I got writing. But once I was writing, I realized like I have this other thing that I value about myself. I have this other thing that I love, that I do, that I'm kind of good at, that, it, that I'm about. And it's not all about what I look like anymore. Um, so that has smoothed it out. But honestly, like you can, you can, develop a lot of hobbies a lot of interests a lot of creative passions and you can value all this other shit about yourself but dude if you have grown to be honest I, th I think maybe autism is irrelevant here if you have grown up with pretty privilege you are going to be violently humbled by life at some point when it comes to your fear of aging and your internalized a ageism life is going to come and punch you in the fucking face about that at some point for me it was when I was an alcoholic in 2016 to 2017 to 2018. Um, and I gained all this weight. Like weight wise, I was actually at literally exactly the same weight as I am now. But because I was an alcoholic, I looked eight or nine months pregnant. My face was out here. Um, it was a hot mess. So my looks had just been completely taken from me. None of my clothes fitted. It didn't matter what size I bought things in. I couldn't get into them. Um... And I've told the story before, but like when I first stepped on the scales and realized how bad it was, I trashed my entire room. I took a black marker pen, scribbled insults all over the, like it looked like a crack den. And I lived like that for a year before I redecorated. Um, like I, I lost my fucking shit and I hated myself so much and it, I saw it reflected in everything. I remember I was watching the show Weeds and that show pff, was such a kick in the face every time. Like I, I kept watching it. <laughs> and, oh, no. One of the reasons I kept watching it was because she looked so much like one of my friends who died. And so I was like, every one of her little facial expressions, I was like, oh my God, like it looks, ugh. Oh. So I was, I was kind of like emotionally tied to this program. Um, but oh, it was a depressing thing to watch because I realized that like this show, everything, every scrape this woman in Weeds gets through, it's because of pretty privilege. It's because she is a thin, white, attractive woman and she can fuck her way out of every situation she is in. She can fuck, flirt, whatever her way out of all situations. And I was like, you had all of those privileges too. And now look at you. Now look at you. You are this mess in every conceivable way. Like, 
um that was violently violently humbling um and it, you know you, and when you've had this happen to you like don't think that it's done with and it's going to it's going to like you know you you get used to it and it's done with no th- there is going to be more violent humblings down the road you know whether that's gray hair i mean personally like i think gray hair is beautiful and i'm kind of sad that gray hair doesn't so much happen that much in my family so i probably won't get it but i know for some people going gray is like um you know there's there's the menopause obviously um there is things like losing your continence um which happens to a lot of women a lot of women are reliant on tenor lady pads and things like that by the time they're in their 40s and 50s and so on um like you know varicose veins cellulite saggy boobs um like like a lot a lot of shit is going to come along and happen to you that is going to violently violently humble you um regarding this fear of aging this pretty privileged thing so you you have got to you have got to find things to put your self-worth on that are not appearance based um and finding friends who are not your friends because of your appearance is vital for that like vital you have got to have friends who you don't mind seeing when you've got no makeup on and you look like shit and you're in your pajamas and you know and i feel like you pretty much only get that with women um maybe gay guys maybe some gay guys but basically women um having them in your life is is vitally supportive i think when it comes to all this stuff like 10 years ago whenever i would go out clubbing even though at this point i knew my gender identity i knew i identified as a guy i knew i felt more confident more myself more happy when i was dressed as a guy i still would go clubbing always dressed in kind of girly clothes because i felt like i need to be like I need to be perceived as all of these things that have got me boyfriends before. And it's like, dude, if they don't want you when you're dressed as yourself, that's not your person anyway. I would quite like to find someone, but nonetheless, I am not going to spend my entire life dressed up like a pretty present with a fucking ribbon and a bow on that I find itchy and uncomfortable and that doesn't represent me. I am not going to tie myself up as some kind of like feminine present to try and win prizes with your pretty privilege because it turns out by the time you're about my age you you realize that all the prizes you won with pretty privilege uh were not prizes really at all um like how many of them do you have left (laughs) at this point when it comes to the people that you that you won over with your pretty privilege the people who were there for you for your looks how many of them are really in your life anymore not many Um, not many. I do want to say this is not a huge bitch about having pretty privilege because I think like it's obviously the the clue is in the name it is a privilege and it does in the main make your life easier like if you've got pretty privilege as an autistic okay the friends you make may be men who are only there because you're emergency pussy but they are still friends and they are still people you can spend time with and I do still have a lot of good memories from hanging out with those guys. Um, Whereas if I didn't have pretty privilege, who would I have had? I do feel oftentimes it is the autistic women who don't have pretty privilege who end up in some of the scariest, most awful abuse situations because the men who seek after them you know, there is this horrible, horrible, horrible kind of guy who will deliberately seek for a, a woman who who doesn't have pretty privilege because he knows she's not going to have a big ego. She's not going to have much self-esteem. She's going to do whatever, whatever I say. I mean, look, like, I don't even want to repeat this shit, but you know, you know you've heard the frat bro chat about how like less attractive women will take anything in the bedroom and will do anything in the bedroom and are desperate to please and all of that. So you've got that kind of shit and that kind of mentality that goes around in some of these guys. Not to say that, you know, if you don't have pretty privilege, like every guy who goes for you is going to be one of these assholes. Not Obviously, the benefit of not having pretty privilege is that hopefully you 
find your partners on more of a conversational basis and you know you meet them as friends more so and you meet them as equals who you've got stuff in common with and hopefully you end up with a relationship that is truly beautiful but when you've also got autism they know you're the perfect prey they know you're the perfect prey and so I think a lot of autistic girls who don't have pretty privilege do end up in these horrible situations and of course they do because they've been rejected and rejected and rejected through high school just like I had and just like I did I fell at the feet of the first guys who would give me any attention whatsoever so that's what they're going to do and if they've got these guys who are coming at them through these predatory horrible means like that's terrifying and awful so I definitely don't want this to sound like a oh god it's so awful having a really privilege like mm. Um, no, I, th I think it can be worse. It can be worse without pretty privilege. Um, but yeah, if, if you're autistic and you've got pretty privilege, um, the friends it can leave you with oftentimes are not, not really your friends and the hangups <laughs> it can leave you with. It's a big complex basket of fuckery. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, this, this is long as fuck at this point, I think. So, um, please tell me your thoughts. And if you have more autism related waffles you think I should have, then, um, please leave them below. I would just like to finally say, um, that I'm incredibly, I'm incredibly fucking grateful for the friends that I do have in my life now and for how persistent they have been with me and with my distrust of people and women in particular <laughs> and all of that, that they have had to be quite persistent with me. And I'm glad that they have been because now I have lovely friends in my life who I'm not going to lose over bullshit like them, you know, getting a partner and, and just disposing of me, you know. So, um, so big, big up to all my friends. So, uh, yeah, over and out. <laughs>